a fully and rapidly reusable orbit class rocket. Um, this is a very difficult thing to do because we, we, we live on a planet where it, that is just barely possible. Uh, if gravity were a little lower, it would be easy. If it was a little higher, it would be impossible. Creating the fully reusable rocket is incredibly challenging, something Elon Musk has acknowledged many times. Right now, the biggest hurdle facing the Starship program is reusing the upper stage. But what if they didn't have to? Surprisingly, even without full reusability, Starship would still represent a massive achievement in spaceflight. And, perhaps even more unexpectedly, the idea of using Starship as an expendable vehicle has already been considered by Musk himself. So, how exactly does an expendable mode Starship be like? When asked about this matter a while ago, Elon replied, Expendable upper stage may or may not fly, but it is an option. When you aim to reuse Starship, reentry becomes a major challenge. The energy that needs to be dissipated during reentry doesn't just scale with velocity. It scales with the square of the velocity. That means even a small increase in speed results in a much larger increase in heat. This energy turns into intense heat during atmospheric reentry, raising the vehicle's surface temperature to thousands of degrees, hot enough to glow white. To survive this, Starship needs a robust heat shield made of thermal protection tiles. On top of that, reusable missions require additional components like header tanks for landing fuel, aerodynamic flaps for control, and landing legs, all of which add weight and complexity. But in an expendable version, none of that is necessary. There's no need for a heat shield, flaps, landing gear, or extra fuel for a return and landing. All that mass can be repurposed for payload, and no need to reserve some fuel for a controlled landing back on Earth. Basically, nearly the entire vehicle can be optimized for delivering cargo to orbit or beyond. Of course, this translates to a huge boost in payload capacity. According to SpaceX's website, an expendable Starship can carry up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit. For context, Skylab weighed about 76 tons, so Starship could launch the equivalent of more than three Skylabs in a single go. Even more impressive, the entire International Space Station has an estimated mass of around 420 tons. That means, in theory, Starship could launch that same amount of mass in just two expendable flights. That's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. With an expendable Starship, you unlock two major possibilities. Either a massive payload to low Earth orbit, or the ability to send large spacecraft deep into the solar system. Personally, I'd love to see planetary exploration missions that carry enough propellant to perform a burn-flip-burn -burn trajectory, allowing them to reach their targets much faster without relying on years of gravity assists. Right now, most interplanetary missions have to perform multiple interplanet flybys to gain enough velocity through gravity assists. This adds years to the mission timeline and increases the risk of failure due to time-related degradation of systems. Take ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, as an example. It launched in 2023 to study Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. But before it can even head for Jupiter, it has to perform four inner solar system flybys, including three Earth flybys, and won't leave the inner planets until 2029, finally arriving at Jupiter in 2031. Or consider Europa Clipper, which launched last year. It's doing a Mars flyby, followed by another Earth flyby, before finally heading to Jupiter in late 2026, arriving in 2030. That mission is also a good example of SpaceX going fully expendable with Falcon Heavy. Honestly, we don't need to go as far as Jupiter to find examples of semi-expendable starships. The upcoming Starship Human Landing System for NASA's Artemis Moon missions could be considered one. Unlike the standard Starship, the HLS variant won't have atmospheric heat shields or aerodynamic control surfaces since it's not designed to return to Earth. Instead, it will be equipped with specialized insulating tiles to protect against micrometeoroids and orbital debris, while also minimizing heat gain from solar and Earth radiation, critical for preserving its cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane during long-term orbital storage. SpaceX has plans to eventually convert the HLS into a permanent lunar outpost once it lands on the moon, but given that it won't be recovered or reused, it's fair to say the HLS version of Starship is not fully reusable. There's another significant advantage to consider in this concept. Reduced construction time and increased launch cadence. While Starship production is already impressively fast by traditional spacecraft standards, 
It still falls short of Elon Musk's long-term goal of producing up to 1,000 starships per year. That pace may change soon, as SpaceX is building two massive gigabays in Texas and Florida to streamline manufacturing even further. Now, imagine if SpaceX chose to skip reusability for certain starship variants, eliminating the need for heat shield tiles, flaps, grid fins, header tanks, and landing fuel, would drastically simplify the design. They could also reduce the number of RCS thrusters, simplify plumbing, and cut back on avionics and control systems. These changes would significantly reduce construction time and make each vehicle cheaper to build. Even today, Starship is far more cost-effective than systems like SLS, and an expendable version could be built even faster and at lower cost, especially with reduced labor requirements. While a fully reusable architecture remains the ultimate goal, an expendable Starship paired with a reusable Super Heavy booster would still offer enormous benefits. Reusing Super Heavy alone recovers about 85% of the engine hardware, most of the mission cost, for only a fraction, roughly 20% of the complexity involved in reusing Starship itself. Orbital refueling would still be possible with expendable tankers, enabling missions that would otherwise be impossible. While this approach would be more expensive than full reusability, it could be a practical stepping stone. If SpaceX were to focus solely on reusing Super Heavy, it could still launch more mass to orbit than any other provider. Even in an expendable form, Starship would be the second most capable launch vehicle in the world in terms of payload capacity, unlocking mission profiles that no other rocket could support. So, with all those advantages, why do SpaceX and Elon Musk still insist on making a fully reusable spacecraft? It's important to note that Starship's two most immediate missions, Starlink and NASA's human landing system, HLS, practically require reusability. If Starship were expendable, SpaceX might not even be able to build enough rockets to meet Starlink's launch needs. Throwing away multiple Starships per mission simply isn't sustainable, either in terms of production capacity or cost. Expendable Starships would also make HLS missions astronomically expensive. Each moon landing would require multiple orbital refueling launches, meaning you'd be throwing away several tankers just to support one mission. That adds up quickly. Now, there is a major advantage to expendable starships. They can deliver extremely heavy payloads in a single launch, something no other rocket can do. But the catch is, very few organizations are developing payloads that actually need that much lift capacity. That's one of the main reasons Falcon Heavy hasn't flown as often as it could. If you're paying for the whole rocket, you want to maximize every kilogram. But if you're just paying for the fuel, it makes more sense to send smaller loads more frequently on a fully reusable vehicle. Sure, there are payloads that might justify an expendable Starship, like large space station modules, massive telescopes, or super heavy spy satellites. But those missions are rare. And even then, fitting a 150-ton payload into Starship's existing cargo bay would be difficult due to volume limitations. Skylab, the heaviest satellite ever launched in a single piece, weighed 76 tons, and it was way too bulky to fit inside Starship's current fairing. To make expendable Starship launches viable, you'd likely need a stretched version with a larger fairing to carry those oversized bulky payloads. Another potential use for an expendable Starship could be massive rideshare missions. Similar to what SpaceX already does with Falcon 9, a third party could aggregate 50 to 100 small sat customers who all want to reach sun-synchronous orbit. That kind of mission could make economic sense even with an expendable launch. Or take this idea. NASA could buy a single expendable Starship and fill it with cheap scientific instruments. No need for ultralight, failure-proof cameras. Just pack in a thousand of them and invite universities, ESA, JAXA, and others to join in. Share the cost, share the glory, and send the rocket to Venus or Jupiter. Starship could become a low-cost, high-mass platform for deep space exploration that's never been possible before. But being expendable means Starship has to give up another capability, its use as an Earth-focused fast transportation system. The concept of point-to-point -point travel was first introduced during one of Elon Musk's early Starship presentations, back when it was known as the BFR. By repurposing vehicles designed for suborbital or orbital launches, the goal is to deliver cargo or passengers across the globe in a fraction of the time conventional aviation allows, tapping into a market significantly larger than traditional satellite launches.
SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell highlighted this capability, noting that Starship could operate similarly to an aircraft, taking off from one location on Earth and landing halfway around the globe in roughly 30 to 40 minutes. The longest part of such a trip, she mentioned, would be the transit to and from offshore launch platforms. For instance, a flight from New York City or Vancouver to the other side of the planet could take less than an hour, cutting travel time by orders of magnitude compared to conventional aviation. This vision has already drawn attention from the U.S. Air Force, particularly the Air Force Research Laboratory, which is exploring the concept for rapid global cargo deployment. Most intercontinental trips using Starship would take under 30 minutes, making it a promising solution for tactically responsive logistics. In the future, with daily, rapid turnaround launches and minimal refurbishment, Starship could become a reliable and cost-effective global transport system. Payload capacity is another major factor in evaluating Starship's freight potential. In its Block 2 configuration, Starship is the most powerful launch vehicle ever developed. With a 9-meter diameter and 52.1-meter height, it can carry up to 150 metric tons in reusable mode or up to 250 metric tons if flown expendably. For comparison, the Boeing 747-400 freighter, one of the most widely used cargo aircraft, can transport about 113 tons. Starship's superior capacity allows for single-launch delivery of heavy military hardware, including armored vehicles, artillery, and helicopters, significantly enhancing global strategic mobility and operational logistics. Moreover, Starship's full reusability dramatically reduces per-launch costs, especially compared to current expendable or semi-reusable commercial space vehicles. Over time, as launch infrastructure matures, point-to-point -point transport could become not only viable, but economically competitive. While using Starship for cargo transport avoids many regulatory hurdles associated with passenger travel, the military would still need to consider legal, diplomatic, and operational concerns when launching rockets to non-combat regions of the world. An expendable launch system with 200 or more tons of capability to low Earth orbit and more volume than the next two or three largest rockets combined is absolutely game-changing. But I still fully support developing a reusable super heavy Starship system. I believe it would be the single greatest technological breakthrough since the invention of the steam engine and the steam train. A lot of people see the explosions and crashes during testing as proof that this is a crazy or unrealistic plan. Yes, these failures are happening, but they're part of developing the reusable side of the system. The important thing is that SpaceX has already succeeded in creating an operational launcher. The only difference is that while everyone else stopped at building and selling an expendable launcher, SpaceX is continuing development to turn it into a reusable system. SpaceX could and very likely should create an expendable mode Starship, but they still need to not give up on making the very first fully reusable space launch system.